So we spent the last couple videos looking at the magnetic field created by a loop of current. And this is actually a very important problem in physics because this is the basis of one of the most important circuit components out there, the solenoid, also known as the inductor. Basically to create a solenoid or an inductor, you take multiple loops of current and stack them on top of each other. Now of course what you're really doing is spiraling the current up, but that upward motion of the current is small compared to the uh, going around the axis motion. And so today I wanna show how we can use this code we've already got to examine the magnetic field of a solenoid. So this is the original code that we had before where we're creating a single loop of current and it gives us the magnetic field of a dipole like we've seen before. If I wanna make this into a solenoid, I have to take this loop and create another one. So this is, these, these four uh, cylinders create one loop. So if I do copy and paste, I can create another loop now, if I just run the code as it is now, they'll be right on top of each other. So let's place this one up along the y-axis a little bit. So let's change all of its y-values to 0.5. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, there we go. Um, actually, I want to do, no, no, I want it to be up smaller than that, 0 0.05. Yeah, one radius up from the other one. One, two, three, four, there we go. And then we'll hit Control-2 to run and they're overlapping a little bit, uh, but you get an idea of how their magnetic fields are combining. Basically, you get a more exaggerated version of the magnetic field that you had before. If I add yet another loop, copy and paste. Okay, one, two, three, four going up. Let's change this now to a 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0.1. Again, it's gonna exaggerate that magnetic field even more. So the field is dying off pretty quickly as you get farther away. And then on the inside, it's kind of hard to tell because all these uh, magnetic field <laughs> arrows are, uh, are getting a bit too close to each other. But basically you're getting a very strong field on the inside pointing along the axis of the solenoid and you're not getting much of a, of a magnetic field when you get farther away. Now if you work out the problem using Ampere's law in your physics 2 class, you'll see that the, um, that the magnetic field inside becomes uniform and it's a very nice problem to work with because it's nice to get um, a uniform field at the end. I think I'm missing a cylinder there. Did I forget to change somebody to 0 0.1? One, two, Okay, no, that's probably just an illusion on my part. But to create lots of these, it's going to get irritating to have to um, copy and paste and edit, copy and paste and edit, and it opens me up for, uh, for the opportunity for mistakes, and I'd rather not do that. Oh, I see what's wrong. I'm missing a negative on this guy. That should fix that. So yeah, there's a perfect example of why we don't want to be doing this by hand, is because it gives me uh, opportunity to make mistakes I'm still missing a cylinder there. What happened there? I've got a negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, negative. I'm missing negative, positive. No, I have negative, positive. I miss, oh, I'm missing positive, positive. There we go. Okay, there we go. That's better. Now we're all lined up. So anyway, case in point, there are lots of opportunities for mistakes when you're copying and pasting code, but the code can repeat itself using a loop, right? So if I come over to this better version of a solenoid code, I only have the sources uh, information written once, right? So I've only got this uh, loop created once. And what I'm going to do is loop over the values of y. So I'm gonna take y from negative one up to positive one. And we're gonna go in steps of 0 0.1. So we'll end up with 20 loops using just this simple set of code here. So I've hit control two. Here I get my solenoid, so I get 20 loops stacked on top of each other. And this time we're examining the magnetic field inside the solenoid. We're not really interested in the magnetic field outside. And what we get, if I zoom in here, we get a pretty uniform uh, magnetic field. Um, there's a little bit of flaring up at the edges uh, that's probably a computational error because it's it's pretty well uniform on the inside, just like you get when you apply 
Ampere's Law. Now, of course, if I make the current stronger, like we've seen before, I'm going to get a stronger magnetic field. So let's try increasing the strength of the current. Um, let's actually give these all the same current here. C-U-R-E-N-T, copy, paste, paste. I know it looks weird to say current equals current, but basically the, the current on the left-hand side is the attribute current we're assigning to sources.append, and then the current on the right-hand side is the number that we stored in current over here. Um, let's try that again. So we've, oh, wait, I haven't actually changed the current yet. Sorry, yes, we got the same answer, that's good. So if I increase the current, let's say we double it, I end up with double the magnetic field. And again, it's pretty well uniform. Um, and of course, we've uh, doubled our current, so we've got the uh, current arrows twice as long here. Now, of course, one of the questions that arises is what happens to the strength of the magnetic field as we uh, increase the size of the solenoid. Um, let's do this. Let's set up like we had before. Let's set up a side length. Let's call that 1.0. And what I can do here is just replace all of my ones with a side length, and then it's easier to change that length later. Paste, 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 and paste. And then I also have to change their locations to be side length over two in the X and Z. So there's side length over two, side length over two. And the results of the uh, of Ampere's law says that this should give me the same strength of the magnetic field. Uh, let's see if that bears out in our calculation here. And lo and behold, we get about the same length as before, or same length of the magnetic field as before. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, oh wait, I haven't changed the side length yet. I have to actually change things when I want to change them, don't I? Uh, I'll set that to two, control two to run. And we get about the same so, uh, same length of the magnetic field. It's a little bit shorter because it's going down to a few up from the bottom. I should probably just have it print the magnitude, huh? Uh, let's hit Control Two. Yeah, it's it's only shortening by a little bit. So I think we're I think our claim of Ampere's law is is all right there. Um, of course, another fun thing we've done before is change the uh, current in the loop. We've made that oscillate. If we do that here again, uh, we'll have our current going like a cosine. Our magnetic field is going to change accordingly. So whenever you've got an inductor like this in a circuit, usually you have it hooked up to an AC circuit, and so your magnetic field is going to oscillate with the same function that the current does, which is pretty cool. Now, of course, a changing magnetic field is also going to induce an electric field. That will be a topic for a future video. And just for fun, let's add more um, loops to this solenoid. Let's make the solenoid longer. So we're going to make this thing now go, let's go from negative 10 to 10, control two. And there is our very tall solenoid, and there's our magnetic field inside it. We're, of course, moving slower in the animation now because we have so many more loops to keep track of. But you notice even when I made the solenoid longer, um, the, the strength of the magnetic field doesn't change. So it's uniform going across the solenoid, and it's uniform going up and down the solenoid, which is pretty handy. So the solenoid produces a uniform uh, magnetic field, just like the... A uh, parallel plate capacitor produces a uniform electric field. So this is the magnetic analog of the parallel plate capacitor. So we've had some fun with these magnetic fields. I think what we'll do next time is we'll start putting some charged particles in these rings of current and solenoids, and uh, we'll see how a charged particle actually responds to these magnetic fields that we've been creating. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.